don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. The way they look at me, the way they flinch at my touch, so be it. Hello everyone and welcome back to Landfish GTV. I'm your host Batman and today I'm going to be giving you a review of L.A. Noir. L.A. Noir is developed by Rockstar Games, the people who brought us to the Grand Theft Auto series and last year's hit Red Dead Redemption. Both of these were just spectacular games, so when I saw that this game was coming out I already knew it had to be good. But what seriously had me so intrigued by the game was the trailers that they were putting out. I was just almost pissing myself seeing the way that the characters talk to each other, it just seems so realistic, especially for some in-game footage. Yet over time I began to see how the game was actually going to be played out. Not only do you play as a cop this go around, you actually get to solve cases, find clues, evidence, interrogate people, all with an open-ended case. Never before have I seen a game that was all revolved around this, so I wondered if this game would either be a whole lot of fun or just really boring. Well, when the game finally came out a few weeks ago, I went and bought it within the first couple of days of release and got it for the Xbox 360. And holy dear Lord Jesus, people, the 360 version of the game is three whopping discs. Yet, from my understanding, the PlayStation 3 version of the game only has one disc. So, anyway, why three discs? Well, I think what took up so much of the space was probably the billion cutscenes throughout the game, but probably more so with the facial motion capture that they use. I don't know if you've seen how they do this stuff, but it's pretty amazing, and it's gotta take a whole lot of memory. So the guy's names that I've been seeing doing the repairs on the heaters, they're fully licensed and accredited. So I pop in the first disc to see exactly how the game plays out. You first start off as a regular cop named Cole Phelps, a marine war hero from World War II, who lives in the city of Los Angeles in the late 1940s trying to make a living. So, you're just playing as this regular cop now, but as the story progresses, you get promoted to other types of cases. The patrol desk, where you start out, is just a tutorial in a way. Almost the entire time, they hold your hand, telling you where to go, what button to press, blah blah blah. And so far, it's just impossible to even fail these missions. However, this does seem to make it easy to understand just how the game is going to work. Because once you're off the patrol desk, you're on your own. Then you get to go to like the traffic desk, homicide, vice, and even arson. Each case is very, very unique, and some of them can even play off of each other. When a case starts off, you travel with your partner from the police station to the crime scene. Oh, and by the way, this is almost the entire city of Los Angeles. This map is absolutely gigantic. The game is free roam, just like you see in GTA and Red Dead, so you can do what you want when you want. Well, almost, but I'll get into that later. When you go into the crime scene, evidence is laid around the place, and the way the game tells you when clues are around you, you hear an eerie type of music playing, and it will end once you've investigated all the clues. And the way you find individual clues is that you hear a chime, and your controller will vibrate, telling you that you're right on top of the clue. Sub-evidence will lead you closer to solving the case, using it against other suspects to tell whether they're lying, or it might not even mean anything at all. Usually, once you have left the crime scene, you leave to find possible leads, which comes with interrogation. Now, this is possibly the best part of the game, in my opinion. I'm not sure why, but these sequences are so much fun, and it's interesting to see people's facial expressions to determine if the person is telling the truth or even lying. The only problem that I really had with this is telling whether to doubt a person or consider them lying. Sometimes it's obvious, other times you think you have the evidence to say that they're lying, but you should have doubted them, and vice versa. So, if you get a question wrong, you can't redo that question. You then have to see how the story plays out from there. Sometimes it's small things that change, like maybe you have to tell the person, or other times it can be way more drastic, meaning life or death for someone. In some cases, you get your suspects into interrogation rooms, question them, use evidence against them, and then you decide which person gets locked away or put in the gas chamber. Sometimes you get them right, others you're not so sure about, then somewhere it's just straight up front, what the F were you thinking? Also with everything you do comes experience points, which makes you level up and earn new suits, challenges, and intuition points. Intuition points can be used when solving a crime, whether at the scene or during interrogation. An intuition point can show you all the clues at a crime scene, remove an answer during interrogation, 
or even show how the community through the social club network answered a question. So what kind of cop game would this be without some guns, eh? Cole is issued a Colt 45 pistol which can only be used when in shootouts. So no people, you can't just walk down the street and shoot a guy in the face. I know, I was disappointed too, but of course we have other games for that and this game has better qualities that overweigh this. Also, you don't have an arsenal of weapons, you know, that magically appear out of your coat pocket. However, you can pick up enemy weapons, including a shotgun, a Thompson, an M1 Grand, or even a BAR. Not really a whole lot of weapons to choose from, but trust me, the shootouts in this game are a lot of fun. It's like Red Dead, but with automatic weapons. If you do want to use a weapon besides the pistol in a shootout, just run to the trunk of your car, pull out a shotgun, and if you got the nifty DLC that's free by the way, you get the Chicago Piano, or as most of you know it as the Tommy Gun. Now a thing I was severely disappointed with this game is the amount of shootouts or people that you could kill but are not in this game. I don't know if they knew it or not, but killing people in this game is extremely fun and satisfying, yet it seems like it never happens, and almost each time it'll be like 8 people that you have to kill whether it's robbing a bank or whatever but once again not a whole lot of people to kill I'm sure that they were going for the more realistic approach in this game and they obviously succeeded in this video game but give me something to shoot now besides the cases that you solve we see the story of Cole Phelps very little is known about him through most of the game he mentions his wife and kids some yet we only see his wife like twice in the whole game and you might as well just call his kids non-existent. Every once in a while you'll see a flashback of Cole through when he was in boot camp to the end of the war, kind of revealing who Cole really was. The story of, well, everything really picks up at the end. A lot of things that you learned gets tied together. However, when you get to the very end of the game after you solve the awesome case, you'll be left disappointed. I know I sure as hell was. So what do you do once you've beaten the game? Well, you have plenty to do. Not as much as Red Dead, but there is stuff to do. When riding in your police car, you can answer police dispatches, which are like many cases to solve, which only take a few minutes to complete. Then you can go around and find 50 hidden film reels, which by the way, I only found like one of those bastards, so damn. And also you have a bunch of hidden vehicles to find through LA and they are awesome and really fast. Now of course you can go back and replay any of the cases that you want which are surprisingly fun to play again. I figured that it would be somewhat easy to remember the questions that you asked someone and how you answered them I guess but there are so many instances and choices throughout the game that you won't remember anything. And now that I think of it the most disappointing thing that I can think of in this game is that there's no multiplayer. What the heck, man? We have this giant city of LA and no multiplayer? That was one of the best things about GTA and Red Dead was getting together with some friends and doing some free roam. I can understand that they were more focused on the single player experience and I applaud them for it but some sort of multiplayer would have really rounded up the whole package for me. Alright, so all in all, Rockstar has done it again, making an excellent game. And also, I can't forget to mention Team Bondi really helped them make this game to what it is. So if you're the kind of person who really enjoyed GTA games or even Red Dead, then you will absolutely love this game. Even though not as many shootouts happen as I hoped, solving cases makes it all much better. Whether it's finding clues, interrogating people, chasing down suspects, or locking criminals away for good, all of it rounds out to be a great game that will probably change the way that we see video games forever. So I'm going to give this game a 9 out of 10. I would have given it a 9.5 or something if it had some sort of multiplayer. Perhaps we can pray for in the future for some sort of DLC, but who knows. Now for the big question, is it worth the $60? Oh hell yeah it is. Out of the several hours that you will be playing this game, it'll take more than a rental to fully get the experience of L.A. Noir. Gentlemen, lock and load. Like what you saw? Want to see more? Here's okay. Landfish DTV. For commentary, news, and... Um, more. Yes. More.